Artisans, if you're like most people, then taking a test can sometimes make you a little testy. But today, we're discussing a few simple ways that you might be able to improve your test scores without any extra studying at all. Allow me to explain. The classic classroom test comes in only a few different flavors. Today, we're going to be focusing on multiple choice questions because they are the most common, and they are also perhaps the easiest to hack. I've hacked into the answer. It's C, I think. First up, let's discuss whether you should switch your answer if you've already written something down, but later you think that you might have been wrong. Should you switch your answer, or should you go with what your gut initially told you? Many test prep guides will tell you to stay with your original answer and go with your gut, but studies conducted with actual tests have found, repeatedly, that switching your answers is actually a really great idea. More often than not, switching answers leads to higher test scores. A study from 2005 by Fisher, Herman, and Kopp looked at what happened on a particularly difficult exam. They found that, out of the entire set of answers changed, 55% were wrong to right changes, 25% were right to wrong, and 20% were wrong to wrong. So the majority of changes either improved the person's test score or caused no difference in the case of changing a wrong answer to another wrong answer. The psychology of this might simply be that when you get caught up on a test question and you're internally debating whether or not to change your answer, your brain is trying to get your attention, because there's something funny about the test question, but it's not quite sure what it is. Simply put, if something feels off about your answer to a test question, it more than likely is off, even if you can't articulate exactly why. Next, let's talk about the all of the above and none of the above type questions that so many of you hate. Well, once I reveal this secret of test design, you might just fall in love with these questions instead. Because the thing about these questions, including all of the above and none of the above options, is that more often than not, the correct answer to these questions is that all or none option. An investigation into over 100 different tests by William Poundstone, the author of the book Rock Breaks Scissors, A Practical Guide to Outguessing and Outwitting Almost Everybody, found this to be the case. In fact, for questions including an all or none option, the correct answer was that all or none option 52% of the time, which is way higher than it should be. That gives you ridiculously good odds to get this type of question correct, especially if you came into the test with knowledge of your own to further narrow down options. Knowing this trick is just the gravy on top. And finally, let's discuss one test weakness that most teachers succumb to when designing their own tests. Length of answers to test questions. This one is useful to keep in mind whether you're a test taker or a test maker. When in doubt and having no other evidence towards which multiple choice answer to choose, always go with the longest plausible answer. Poundstone describes this as a good strategy because when a test answer is correct, it has to contain certain language, which might cause it to be a long string of words, but an incorrect answer can be any length. And when someone is designing a test, it is tempting and easy to design short, wrong answers. I would also add that when designing your own test questions, something that I've done frequently, it is difficult to come up with plausible-sounding wrong answers that also happen to be long for certain test questions, and so the wrong answers end up being shorter for that reason too. Now, none of these strategies on their own are enough to make you ace a test, but if you keep them in the back of your mind and actually study for the test as well, they might make the difference on enough questions to bump you up from a B-plus to an a minus. Although, be careful, because some teachers intentionally mix up their test questions in order to avoid these problems, especially those that have seen this video. So it also depends on how tricky your instructor is, too. Hit the like button if you learned something new, or if you've already used one of these test strategies to defeat a particularly difficult test question. And leave me a comment below about what other test-taking strategies you like to use. Remember that you can super subscribe over on Patreon, and you can hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button in order to make sure that you never miss another video from this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.